Welcome inside the Georgia Tech Baseball Podcast Ground Rules here inside the batting cages at Backneese Baseball Park. We've got a couple of special guests before we kick off the 2022 baseball season. We're excited to do this throughout the year, a chance to catch up with some yellow jackets, talk some baseball, and, and talk some things off the field. And I'm Wiley Ballard, your host. Thrilled to have our Friday and Saturday starters, Chance Huff and Zach Maxwell. And let's start with that, guys. What did it mean to both of you uh, to know you're going to be the one and two starters in the weekend rotation to begin the season. Chance, you're going on Friday. Uh, uh, definitely a huge honor, you know, um, especially last year with kind of getting to start the last game against Vanderbilt, uh, which is the school I came from, and then the exit meeting with them talking as hopes of me being a starter um, and just kind of to get to see all that come into fruition um, and just see all the hard work gone in from the summer even from last season, carry into the fall and preseason to set myself up well for um, for this season. It's been really fun to see. Um, it's just really a big honor. I'm excited to be the first guy out there um, and then just hand the ball off to Maxwell the next day as well. Yeah, it's going to be a fun season. And then, Zach, you were the opening day starter two years ago in 2020 as a true freshman. I uh, worked in the bullpen last year, as did you, Chance. Uh, what does it mean to you get a shot uh, now back in the rotation in year three? Yeah, it's much the same as it was freshman year. Uh, like Chan said, it's just a lot of the grind. You know, they talk to you after the year, like, hey, like, we want you to be, you know, one of the guys on the weekend that we're going to entrust to, you know, go out there and secure, you know, weekend series. Those are those are huge, and it's a big honor. And just having to know that you got to work hard this summer, come in the fall, still got to put in those hours. Even in the winter, it's just it's a continuous grind. And to see it, you know, pay off is really, really good. And from a program standpoint, you're going back decades and decades. Georgia Tech's been known – for the offense, for the bats. That's always been a big part of this program. We were deliberate wanting to get some pitchers on here in the first episode. Can you kind of put into words the, the philosophy and the expectation uh, for Georgia Tech pitchers in 2022 under pitching coach Danny Burrell? Uh, just this year, Georgia Tech's not going to be known for a hitting team only. Uh, I think any pitcher on the rotation would say that. Um, but no, I think just the biggest emphasis has just been on strike throwing, uh, getting ahead. Um, just execution of pitches. I mean, everybody in our, everybody in the staff has great arms, great stuff, and now it's just the point of getting to a place where we can all succeed with that. Um, and I think we've done a great job of it so far, um, just from freshmen all the way up to seniors and even fifth-year seniors. Everybody's just been doing a good job of really putting the emphasis on that first pitch strike, getting ahead and staying ahead and working on execution of all the different pitches. Zach, I know when we've seen you in the back of the pen, the, the velocity has been pretty eye-popping, uh, touching 98, 99, triple digits at times. Uh, your slider, though, has, has really been, I think, a pitch that a lot of people started to take notice of in the second half of the season. Can you tell me about your breaking ball and, and, and how you've kind of worked on it with Coach Burrell? Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely it was good when I got here, and it's only gotten better. He, uh, he's, you know, we got track man, all that, all that technology really shows you a lot of the shape from time to time. And he's really just works on shape development and taking what you got and making it even better. So it's only, it's only just gone up. Mm -hmm. Speaking of technology, I mean, like I think anybody in baseball the last five, 10 years and the technology has just changed tremendously. I mean, we're yeah. sitting in a facility uh, right now that's only a year or two old and, and has the latest stuff available in the pitching lab and here in the batting cages. Chance, for you, what piece of technology or, or what number do you look at that you think helps you the most? Um, I'd probably say TrackMan, just be, or TrackMan or the Rapsodo. Um, just kind of getting to – the Rapsodo is nice because that's what we throw the bullpens with and we have the little iPad right there next to us so you get to see, like, velocity, spin rate, um, access. Like, axis, how it's moving, horizontal break, vertical break, um, just kind of all that. And I'm not necessarily the best with that. So that's why it's nice to have Debo sitting right there uh -huh. next to it. Because then you throw one, he's like, that's what you want. Do that again. And then you just kind of get in that pattern of, because if it was just me in there doing it, like, well, that one felt good. <laughs> and I'd be like, well, that one also felt good. And they could be two different, like two completely different profiles. And then it's like, that's why it's nice mm -hmm. to have somebody in there with the experience that Debo has. and. Um, just the knowledge that he has with all that technology. All right, we're, we're closing in on, on the season opener against Wright State. I know everybody in the country is excited to play somebody who's wearing a different jersey than what they're wearing. However, through the fall as well as the preseason, I'm curious, each of you, who's the one hitter that you couldn't get out in Tech's lineup? And who's the one hitter you're like, you know what, I actually did pretty well against him? Uh, there's a couple people. Um, 
KP and Chan. We got a lot of guys that can just fight off pitches. Yeah. Um, and KP can also do a lot of damage very late in counts. Um, <laughs> that but, sounds like a couple two strike uh, extra base hits, maybe. Nah, I don't. Um, <laughs> just in general, but uh, KP and Chan, I, uh, and and I put Trez up there too. I mean, all three of them are just just grinders at the plate. Um, I mean, it doesn't even have to be anything hit hard. It's just making the defense work, fouling off pitches to try and get something better for them. Um, and then a hitter I did particularly well against. Um, uh, I mean, I can't really, I can't really think of just one person. I got you. Oh, it's like that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, like, it'd be like that sometimes. Yeah. What, what, what about you, Maxie? Yeah, it, Chan and Tress at the top. I face them countless times, and. They both just mm -hmm. fight off pitches. You can throw five straight of your best pitches you're going to throw all day, and they, they'll spoil them just easy. They're both fast guys. You don't want them on base. And so just that threat of, you know, you got you got to get this guy out or you got to make them, you know, really earn it. You don't want to give him a free bag. It's, it's daunting on the mound as well as, you know, you're throwing five, six, seven, eight pitches in A-B. Those two guys just really make an impact just flat out. So yeah, two, two weeks ago, uh, Chan had class, so he had a show and go yeah. for so the scrimmage. It's, so, it's, so it's, see, it's so 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I'd like, I'm like, oh, I hadn't seen Chandler today. He's just sitting out there stretching. And I'm getting ready to go. I come out there. I, he's the first person I face. Like, my first four pitches, like, you know, 5 to 95, 97, I, he's fighting them off. He's fouling them off. He has not taken a swing all day. I'm like, well, this is just great. Like, like, like 97 <laughs> at the face. And like, I'm like, this is just great. I got I'm, nothing. Down, I'm down here in the bullpen warming up for the game. And Max is like eight pitches deep on Chan. I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I don't have to do that today. Yeah, I was, I was like, what is this? And he, he gets a fly out to the track. It really shows and goes. It's a fly to the track. I'm like, all right. <laughs> At least he's out. <laughs> That's outstanding. Well, all right, we, we, we touched on some things happening nowadays as we get set for this season. I want to go back into, into your prep days before you got to the college level. Uh, and, and Chance, let's start with you because you had a, a unique tie to another Georgia Tech student athlete. Mm -hmm. You're from Niceville, Florida, went to Niceville High School, the alma mater of not just you, but also Wanye Thomas. Yep. Now, as I understand it, you were not high school football teammates with him, but you guys clashed uh, mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah, we, we, uh, we'd been clashing all the way from the beginning of Pee Wee football days when uh, Niceville played Defuniac, and Defuniac would come to Niceville and work us. Um, but no, I mean, just great competitor, great friend as well. Um, I mean, me and him kind of remained close throughout the years because, I mean, I'd see him in see him in the fall for football and then see him uh, back in middle school. I'd see him in the winter for basketball. Um, and then high school came around, didn't really see him that much. Um, and then he actually transferred to Niceville my junior year. Um, so that was pretty exciting, uh, just fun to have him there, just great guy to be around. And then whenever I was transferring here, um, and when COVID happened, um, and like I posted my like transfer announcement, it was just funny like how excited he was like for he's like you got to come to Georgia Tech, you got to come to Georgia Tech. I was like all right, all right, like it, it's gonna happen. Today. <laughs> who um, who else was in the mix for you? Other other places you considered going? Um, really just here in FSU, um, yeah. just AC because I didn't really um, look at any other SEC schools, and then I just wanted a place. Good competition, obviously, and you find that anywhere in the ACC, mm -hmm. um, and then somewhere close to home. Um, and then the phone calls between me and FSU were like 10, 15 minutes, and had two phone calls with uh, Debo and Rander, and they were both like 45 minutes apiece. So after those two phone calls, it was pretty, pretty obvious that this is where I should, this is where I should be. Can you describe the difference between Coach Ramsey's personality and Coach Burrell's personality? They're honestly kind of similar. You think they're kind of similar? They're, they're similar enough they're that they're similar. also different. Like yeah. they, they, they have very like Ramsey obviously hitter always always pulling for the hitter. Very he was flashy. always <laughs> always pulling for the always pulling for the pitcher. And as soon as like something happens, like Ramsey's the one to be in your face and like yeah like, super hype you up. And then Debo's the one that you'll come off the field and it'll be in your face and hype you up. But Ramsey be the first person to meet you. Debo's the the second guy behind him. But they're I mean they're a lot some lot more similar than you guys like to think. Okay, uh -huh. fair enough. Okay, what about you, Max? Did you play any other sports? No, actually, I was baseball all the way. You never played football? No, or basketball, or really? soccer. That's a shame. Or hockey. That's a That's shame, a shame. Man. We can go down the list. I never played any what are you, what are, what, what's, your, what's your height and weight right now? 6'7", 275. 6'7"? Six, seven, six, seven? Yeah. Holy smokes. Mm -hmm. it, it, nobody's ever charged the mound against you, I guess. 
No, I know better. <laughs> Fair enough. I know I would. I know I would. So as, as far as velocity and size, I mean, did you have a big growth spurt or have you always been the biggest kid on the team? Uh, both, actually. I've always yeah. kind of been the biggest kid on the team. And then it was kind of like that, that sophomore, junior year in high school. I went from like six foot to like six foot five. Okay. And, you know, that, that like, it's like six foot one, six foot two. And then I really went from two to five, six real quick for my senior year of high school. So, I mean, that, you know, one year span grew a little bit. Uh, I mean, I've also been, you know, hardest thrower, yeah. one of the harder throwers for a long time in class all the time. But, I mean, just being able to hold velocity now, going into being a starter is going to be a big, uh, maybe not a big challenge, but a big, uh, it's, like a, it's like a real reward if you can do it. If mm. you can't, I mean, if I can, it's, it is what it is. But just. And if you can't hold it, then it'll be 92.95. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> but, no, yeah. I, I mean, you want to be, I want to be in that, that three to five, two to five range and go longer in the games and be able to reach back and, you know, get one when I want it. But, you know, it's a lot, a lot more fun to pitch for seven innings than it is just one sometimes. No yeah. question. Is, you think the adrenaline will be different going in the first inning versus the ninth? No. About the same? Maybe. But, yeah. I mean, the first inning. It might be more in the ninth. It, it might be more in the ninth, but definitely you get those. You kind of—it's like a different kind of adrenaline. You know, you yeah, get out yeah. there to start the game. You know, you're ready to go. In the ninth, you're like, "All right, I'm ready for this to be over." Like, yeah. just shut the door. It's, it's a different kind. It's a different kind of adrenaline, yeah. but it—they it definitely, they definitely both flow yeah. very, very much. Is it true as a starting pitcher? Do you guys have influence over the uniforms that you guys wear on a given day? I've been told, but yeah, I've never been. That. Like, I pitched Sunday as my freshman year. Well, so that, that might have been a freshman thing, though. No, maybe. but I'm saying but if, if the guy on Friday gets to pick and the guy on Saturday gets to pick, uh, I don't really get a choice. Okay. And so, and like last year, I was a relief pitcher. I went, no. Okay. We'll have to hit a little collab. Yeah, we'll, you guys we'll, got, yeah. Yeah, we'll go, yeah, yeah. We'll go knock down Max Dory here in a minute. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, you got, do, you guys, do you have a favorite uniform of what, what we got so far? Uh, honestly, I mean, I like all of our uniforms. I mean, I'd be fine wearing any of them, honestly. They all look good. I'd well, say so that's a pretty diplomatic answer there on the uniforms there by Chance Huff. He's running uh, – don't want to upset David McDaniel, I suppose. Shout out to yeah. Mac, by the way. Uh, he's got a child on the way, our equipment manager in his seventh season, David McDaniel, and uh, does great work here. So, Maxie, what about you? You got a favorite uniform? Pinstripes. I like them both. Pinstripes. Yeah. The pennies. Road, road gray pinstripes are a definite look, and yeah. they, they, they look good when you play when you play at nighttime. Those, you got those on, they look good. Wearing pinstripes at night out here, they look good. They really pop in, at night. Were, were pinstripes you, are sick. <laughs> <laughs> really? Chance Huff certified. Thank you. Um, were, were you in pinstripes in your first start? Yes. I was going to say, I thought you all were. Okay. Yeah. That, that's not, it's not a biased answer. I, I really yeah. do like the pinstripes okay, a lot. Okay, I gotcha. Okay. Uh, all right, let's 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 hit another couple other topics. Uh, video games. You guys, gamers. Is Fortnite still big? It's coming uh, back. It's coming back. Not, it's coming back. It's it coming died back. off for a little bit. It has come back. Are you are you leading the comeback train? No. I'm no. Absolutely terrible. I played last night. Terrible. Not okay. Who's good? Colin. Everybody Colin but Hall. everybody but everybody but me. Everybody sure. but you. No, Colin Hall is really good. Colin Hall's pretty good. Yeah. Uh -huh, all right, like, we'll ask yeah. him about that when he comes on. Like I don't, I don't ever go hop in the creative lobbies that they play because I'll watch Xander, my roommate, whenever he'll hop on, and I'm just like, ah, oh, that doesn't really look like that much fun to me. I'll, I'll get worked. <laughs> so I just stay out of it because I'm not that great at Fortnite either. Okay, how's how's Xander's roommate, by the way? Xander Stevens missed off last season with Tommy John surgery. Uh, How, how's he been as a roommate? I mean, I know he's had a lot of rehab in front of him recently. Yeah, no, he's been he's been taking it all really well. Um, also fun living with a younger guy, kind of getting him shown the ropes, and then. And boss him around a little bit with some chore duties around the room. Uh, kind of a little older guy thing. That's kind of nice. Uh -huh. Who, who's your roommate, Maxie? I live in the house. I live in the baseball house. Okay. I got, uh, you got five roommates. Yeah, I've got five. It's uh, myself, Luke Bartnicki, Sammy Crawford, Court Rodig. I got Jake Brace, former player, and I got Jack Friedman as well. Oh, it's, oh, it's P.O. Oh, pitchers it's, only. It's a big pitcher house. Pitchers only. How yeah. about that? Who okay. was, the was the last hitter that lived in? Turley. Turley. I mean, oh, okay, yeah, 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 Turley yeah, was there yeah, last year. Yeah. He's kind of one of you guys, though, a catcher. I mean, he's kind of part of the battery. Pretty much, right? yeah. 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 I got you. Okay. Honorary. Okay. Uh, what about cooking? You guys cook at all? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. um, what, what, well, what, what are you bringing to the table? Well, so Xander recently got a crock pot um, for Christmas break, so it's been a nice addition to the room, um, especially just kind of whenever you get to, like, pour everything on in. You can come back eight hours later after practice and class and everything. My room's all smelling good, and then you just get to, and then you have like leftovers for like a week, so makes for pretty nice stuff. Okay, that that is both efficient and tasty. I like that. Okay, what about you, Zach? You cook it all? Oh yeah, I cook. Uh, I can cook anything. I cook steak, chicken. Fish. All right, what's what's your best dish? Oh, I'm gonna go with the uh, the salmon 
yellow rice and broccoli dish. Really? Throw that down. Oh, yeah. I got some salmon fillets in my room. I might need you to come over and cook them then. I'm being serious. Because <laughs> like, I bought them because I was like, I like salmon. But then I realized after I bought them, I was like, I don't really know if I know how to cook this. Right. Oh, yeah. Then but, you put them, put them in the pan, put them in the oven. Who's, who's, whose recipe is it? Oh, it's mine. It's yours? Yeah. It's not a Maxwell family. It's you. No, it's me. It's, okay. me, it's me failing enough times until I got it right. How about that? So. Tell you what, that, that type of persistence, man, that's how, that's how you succeed, both in the kitchen and on the field. Um, well, guys, we can go ahead and wrap it up. Thanks again for joining us. And, and before we let you go, Wright State is on the docket this weekend, opening weekend for Georgia Tech baseball. Uh, give me your best uh, 15, 20 second elevator pitch for why fans need to come out and uh, watch this team this weekend. Yeah, we uh, we need you guys. You guys, this is going to be a good team. It's going to be a fun team to watch, and we need to pack the stands. Uh, you know, it's going to be open again. I know we had some restrictions last year. We got to get as many people in here as we can. You got to be loud. You know, this is a pretty field, pretty place. Come enjoy it. It's here for you guys. Please come and enjoy it. Yeah, like like Maxi said, uh, it's just going to be fun get, uh, getting to get out there and especially play in front of hopefully a big uh, big crowd of fans. Um, just give us something, uh, get something for us to feed off of as well as for the fans as well. Um, so, yeah, we're just looking forward to it and uh, just hope that we can pack out the park. Uh, like you mentioned, there were some restrictions in last year with attendance, of course, so I'm sure there are those who weren't able to make it to a game last year. This place looks totally different uh, from what you might remember before COVID. Champions Hall is here. We're sitting in the new batting cages, part of phase two. We've got the pitching lab next door and uh, all sorts of things uh, to come out and experience. And again, hard to find a better backdrop in all of college baseball than what we have here at a McNeese Baseball Park. Well, uh, Zach Chance, thanks for joining us here on Ground Rules, Georgia Tech Baseball Podcast, your Friday and Saturday starter for opening weekend in 2022. Hope you guys had fun. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Wiley.